Welcome, folks, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm here with Mike Marks from West Hartford. He's a photographer, and he's doing something really special. He's been doing something special for the last three years, and I wanted to talk to him about his project, his special project, and uh, really try to figure out who he is and what he's doing in Connecticut. So, Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Seishu. Appreciate being here. Um, you know, your project... Um, working and photographing uh, patients who are battling multiple sclerosis or MS mm -hmm. uh, really uh, touched a personal nerve because my father has Parkinson's uh, and he's working through that. But I know there are two different uh, diseases. Um, There's a lot of parallels between all illnesses. So There are, of course, yeah. but um, I was just reading a little bit about multiple sclerosis and what it does and uh, how there isn't really a, a, a solution out there, but no. Uh, but the research is ongoing. That's wonderful. And your project, uh, tell us a little bit more about it. How it came about? Okay. Um, well, the project is called I'm a Mosaic. Um, I lived in West Hartford for about five, six years now, and when I moved up here, um, I'm a cyclist. So really, my connection starts with cycling um, through the grapevine, through people that I know. Uh, they said, hey, you know, the, the MS Society is looking for just volunteer photographers to photograph the event. And I was like, okay, that's something different. I don't shoot too much, uh, you know, I, I'm more a portrait and lifestyle photographer. So I was like, it's something different. I can get to meet, you know, different cyclists in the area. Let me do that. So um, it all started with just one event. Um, of course, I do this for a living. So the quality that I brought was a little higher than they were used to. Um, so, uh, I volunteered to photograph another ride and, uh, you know, got some business contacts through there and whatnot. Um, and then I was at one event and there was a book that, uh, the national branch put out in the early nineties and it was called like incidences of hope or something, something along those lines. And it was people across the country that have a mess and not one person was from Connecticut. It was like all these other States and everything. So I basically joined them, uh, you know, approach them. Um, most photographers or creative professionals have to do personal projects to put the work out there that you want to do uh, to really show you know how you think and the way you go about things. So I approached them and I said, let's let's do something like this just for Connecticut, like just do it on the local level. So um, uh, that was uh, the first portrait was about October 2010, September October, um, and you know the project just recently ended. Um, the show is still currently up uh, at the Mandel Jewish Community Center. Um, and that's in West Hartford as well, right? That's in West Hartford, yes. And but it will be coming down this Sunday, and I'm going to be hanging it at the state capitol uh, from March 3rd until March 14th uh, in the Legislators Hall building, uh, which is very good. Um, but basically, you know, the way I looked at the project was I need a producer. So uh, working closely with Karen Butler, who is their vice president of communications, she kind of you know the people that she's met over the years, um, you know who has. The, the, a story to tell, who has an inspiring story that can help us look at this differently. Um, you know, plus, a lot of the images that, that the chapter was using were you know, things from the National Archive. And I think because there is a lot of mystery around MS, the things you're pointing out, yes, there isn't a cure for it, um, but everybody thinks MS, they think wheelchairs. Well, that's not necessarily it. There's cognitive effects and there's all different things. So um, uh, the key was to go into every portrait I photographed 45 people total, um, is that to go in with just no uh, assumptions of, oh, you've had it for this year, so this is the stage at which you are in. So um, it, it forced us to, even in the, in, there was a lot of pre-planning, you know, this is who it is. Uh, I'd call and speak to them on the phone for almost an hour. Uh, we talk about what's the best way to execute the photograph for them that's accurate, uh, that's true. Um, you know, the project didn't really rely too much on the person's past with the diagnosis, but more or less where they are currently and the decisions they've made in the life that they're living. Um, you know, you know, one gentleman used to be a big motorcycle Harley guy, balance started getting affected. And then, you know, he basically still was able to work, was off the bike for about a year or so to save up. And he made the back of his bike into a trike, you know, uh, a woman that had a special harness made so she can still ride her horse. Um, you know, not, not all the images are happy. There's not a lot of, there's not uh, all smiles. Um, but they accurately depict like that, that, the stage in that person's life or their diagnosis at where they're at. 
So um, we never thought the project would get as big as it has. Um, at, at first, you know, they were kind of uh, not reluctant to reluctant to work with me, but they're like, well, they wanted like a finish, a goal line. And I said, you know what? Let's just create a body of work for you guys. Let's not worry about how it's going to be displayed or anything. Let's just put the blinders on and just keep going portrait by portrait by portrait. So, um, and here we are, you know, and um, IamAMosaic.com is a website dedicated specifically to this project. So everybody can see that and little bios about everyone. So, um, but yeah, the initial project was my idea. Um, and then I approached them and uh, truly couldn't have done anything at this level without their help. I mean, really, just communicating and finding the people was a full-time assignment on its own. So I, I can only imagine because I think when, when it comes down to creating a body of work uh, where so much of you needs to be in it, you have to have people helping you put those pieces together, right? I mean, certainly, certainly, yeah. Um, I, I'm a little curious about your approach to these people. I mean, obviously, there are different walks of life, really, uh, at different stages of the disease, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, was it that you'd just pick up a f the, you'd be given a phone number and you'd call them and talk to them first? Or yeah, would you go out and visit with them first? Right. The, the initial... Um, the initial contact was through the MS Society. They kind of knew of Karen Butler and they said, um, you know, either it be a Facebook message or an email with a few addresses on it. And then they would give me the number. I'd say, when's a good time we can talk? Um, there were a few where we met in person, but, um, you know, I travel a lot for assignments and things. So it was always tough to nail down a time. Um, so primarily it was by, it was by phone. Mm -hmm. And I would talk to the person about where they are. Um, you know, uh, just make sure they had a firm grasp on what we were trying to do. Uh, we weren't, we were just trying to create the picture that needed to be created to convey what they're going through. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, you know, like we want to create good pictures, bad pictures, whatever. It was just like, where do you want to be? Like it was a collaboration for all three parties, myself, the MS chapter and the subject, uh, per, you know, per situation. So, um, and depending, you know, whether it be a family walking in the woods, like I would just go out and location scout and say, okay, where are the best spots where we could do this and we could do that, get back to them again. I mean, sometimes it was from the initial phone call to the execution, maybe six to eight weeks, but it didn't matter. It was like, you know what, we just need to create an actual, you know, uh, as true and honest we can be, and time really, you know, wasn't that much of a factor, so. Did you set a schedule, like? Uh, Not I'm at all. No, so it was no, sort of like we, whenever, we, whenever it happened, it happened. Yeah, okay. yeah. This was, you know, make this clear. This was this project was my idea, and it was definitely a pro bono effort. Sure. Um, if anything, every job that I, every photograph I shot, I hired an assistant to come with me. Um, but uh, my paying clients had to come first, so there was no. I mean, there was really no benefit, even if we did have a schedule, you know. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just sometimes there'd be a, a, a month or two month break just because the chapter had fundraising events. I was on, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I was in overseas on, on a job and, you know, it was just, it was tough sure. to have anything like that. So. What does this project mean for you? Um, I mean, this, the big thing, and not just this project, but just how I go about producing the work that I do as a photographer, is it really, I need to be able to earn the trust of like who I'm photographing. Um, and it really, like this project to me wasn't as much about photography as it was just communication in general. Um, because it's one thing to just get the trust of someone. Um, but then also you're getting the trust of someone that oftentimes fears a vulnerability due to their diagnosis. So it's a whole, it, it's a, it's, it was a different level. Um, I mean, you know, quick story, there was actually one person that uh, heard about the project through the, the Hartford Current did an article on me a year or so ago just about myself and the project and uh, they heard about the project and they and we did leave a if you would like to be part of this please inquire Mike so you know a few emails and a few people in the show had come to us which is really nice but one person called and uh, they had just gotten diagnosed they haven't even told their spouse yet or their oh, family wow. I mean it was like a month in um, and they were very angry and I can understand, you know, I, it was, it was very tough. So we left that at, I, I said, I'm going to put you in contact with the MS society. Um, so they did that. And basically long story short, we agreed, maybe this wasn't the best thing for them to do. You know, like they were looking at this project as a form of acceptance and it was, it was tough. Um, throughout that small week or two week of correspondence with them, 
uh, we did send a couple of images their way just to say, this is what we've done thus far. This, this is what we're going for. We're not attacking. We're not exploiting. Um, and then cut to about six or seven months later, they called back and they said, I think I'm ready. And, and so, but I don't know, I don't know if that really, you know, not necessarily something we did or said, but just the course at what we'd done. Um, and the fascinating thing to me about that was, you know, you want to create, we wanted to create this body of work to raise awareness. When you raise awareness, it's like we want to familiarize someone with something that they're not familiarized with versus in this, in that instance, the images were helping someone already within that community. And it was not anything that we could imagine that like these images would also help people with MS that were maybe newly diagnosed to find a little more acceptance and uh, optimism, you know, so be it. So, um, but this project really to me is, is all about, you know, these people kind of open their lives to me. Um, and I know it was involved in, in the, the, with the MS Society, but they weren't always there. A lot of times it was myself, the subject, and my assistant. So, you know, it was really about um, really these people understood that I at least got a glimpse of what they were going through, and I empathized with that. And I think the images that we executed from that um, I mean, just the gallery opening alone to have all the, a lot of those people hadn't seen the image until that day. Oh, really? To wow. see the, yeah, to see the looks on their face, um, it was very overwhelming and it was very humbling. So uh, when, you, when you were photographing them, you, you were tempted to show them the back of your camera at all? Oh, yeah. And a lot of times uh, I wasn't, a, a, you know, it was a collaboration, you know, and given if it was, a, it was an okay situation, I can easily photograph tethered. And, uh, you know, with Capture One and then have the app on the iPad be able to show the image as well. So we'd work together, okay. you know, and, and, you know, different expressions and different emotions would happen throughout the shoot. Um, so all in all, what we ended up using was my call in, in the end. But if there was a question about anything, um, I would approach them with it. But, you know, we didn't, this project, we didn't show images as we were shooting them. We knew that the body of work needed to be shown together because sure. we have, you know, a person in a wheelchair that, you know, has a lot of cognitive effects and can't even speak that well to a guy who's trail running in the woods. Mm -hmm. So he looks healthy, but he's battling a lot to even run like a 5K. Right. You know, even though he looks in shape, there's a lot more going on there. So you needed to, you needed to see and experience everything together in order for, you know, the message to kind of to be out there. Definitely. I, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the, the gallery. I mean, I'm going to try and get out to the uh, Mandel Jewish Center in the next day or so to see it before yeah, it comes down. Do. It comes down on Sunday, you said. And I'm going to take it down Sunday morning. Sunday yeah. morning. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to definitely try and go on Saturday. I have some time in the morning where I can step in and, and check it out. Um, what happens next? Are you moving to put these images into a book? Or do you feel like it's, it's, it's sort of it's sort of come to a a nice closure for with the with the show and then you're moving to yeah. another another I, venue? Initially, initially the original idea because I said the uh, I came up with the idea for this project from looking at a book. So of course I was like, let's create a book on our own. But books are expensive. Yeah. And in this day and age, especially now that it's done, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what benefit a book would have mm -hmm. other than cost. Um, you know, it's a photography book. You can't make one for 5,000. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking 15,000 with proper printing and everything like that. Um, uh, the goal at this point is to um, have the show, if not in its entirety, it's 43 images. It's, it's a large, it's, it's, it's a big body of work. Um, but at least have it in smaller sections be displayed around the state, you know, to use, to use this body of work. You're like, I'm a mosaic. Is it necessarily, I mean, I'm looking at it as like a whole awareness campaign for the MS chapter. So, I mean, the most important thing I think is that they now have a library of images that are unique to the state of Connecticut and they're honest and that are just, you know, uh, across the board, a, a very versatile body of work. I've never created anything this large before and of this diverse. Right. So, um, you know, they have a library of images to take and go with it. So um, my relationship with the MS chapter is long from over. But as far as this project and the intensity that I've put in over the past three years, it, it's definitely the close of that chapter. Um, but, you know, at this point, it's just, like I said, uh, March 3rd through the 14th, uh, March being MS Awareness Month, 
uh, it's going to be at the state capitol. And then after that, we're looking into other other venues. Um, Aetna, the main Aetna building in Hartford, um, it's probably going to be shown there sometime in August or September. And then we're looking into connections at Yale, uh, different colleges, Tully Health Center in Stanford, different places that can you know show these images. Um, and you know to just help raise the awareness on a, on a different level. What is uh, what what does doing something like this uh, pro bono do for your business? Um, well, I mean, I think in general, just personal projects for creative individuals. It's like, well, this is where I am. You know, I mean, like I yes, I've shot CEOs in, in conference rooms before with a ficus in the background. But I mean, does that really show what I can do creatively? Like, not at all. Um, Definitely, uh, the MS Society did serve kind of like as creative director, art director, and we worked together in, in the execution of these images and picked out. But um, this is a whole portfolio for me, you know. And I mean, of course, going in, it was a personal project. I mean, trust me, uh, there's certain ways. Like the images in the gallery are not signed on the front. I signed all the images in the back. Like I didn't want this to be about me. Mm-hmm. Like it was a body of work that I created, but right. it wasn't really me. Right. Um, and that was a conscious decision. Even in the website, it's it's more like about the project and then about the photographer, not the other way around. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, even starting like this afternoon and, and tomorrow, um, you know, over the past three years, as I've been traveling, a lot of times I visit different ad agencies and things across the country. So a lot of people were familiar with what I was doing and just showing them a small like iPad folio of like this is a body of work that I'm working on. Um, and I'm definitely going to be following up with those people because there are a lot of interest in that project. I mean, I think showing my personal work as a commercial photographer gets me more assignments and the assignments that I'd like to do than, you know, uh, you won't see a picture of a guy, in a, you know, in a, a business suit in a conference room on my website because it's just not the work I do. Uh, you know, I really want to do and challenge me creatively. So, um, yeah, it's a whole new body of work and, and hopefully, you know, bring in work that is more you know, a humanitarian type effort is definitely more applicable to me than, um, you know, a corporate environment photographically. So uh, last question, <clears throat> last question for you, uh, Mike, is this, you know, there, there is this delicate balance of doing pro bono work uh, and, of course, doing work for clients who are going to pay your your bills every month um, sure. and, and you make it a business. Um, what does that balance look like for you? I mean, what is, how do you define that well, balance? Well, it, it just depends. I mean, as far as the, the, the money that I put into this project, with hiring assistants and things, um, I mean, how much money do the photographers spend on marketing every year? I mean, if you have an ad-based account or, I mean, I've hired a consultant in the past to help rebrand me and repackage me. I mean, a live book's website's about $35 a month. So, I mean, as far as the expenses with this, I mean, it, it's a write-off, but you have to if, if you have to put yourself out there and to put yourself out there it costs money so that's kind of i didn't extrapolate any more than that um, and i mean some of the favorite images that i've you know i've been doing this for you know about 12 13 years professionally and i i feel like some of the images i created for this project is some of my best work and i think it's because there there wasn't really um, You know, they let me go in there and said, this is what we have to do. And because there was no, the only cohesive thing we did is I consciously didn't retouch anything, you know, mild retouching until the end. I wanted to do everything together. So I was in the same mindset. Um, I didn't do much as the photographs were taken over the past three years. I just, you know, last fall 2013, like October, November um, is where I really kind of put everything together. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it really is like probably the best, some of the best work that I've created. Mike, I want to thank you for your time, uh, you know, coming and talking to us about your personal project and how it's uh, segued into something much larger, obviously. And uh, you found you found a way to not only uh, push yourself creatively, but also give back uh, to the community where you live, which is uh, which is what has inspired me to you know, to even say, Hey, let's talk and let's definitely, right, right. let's get you on the, on the show. Um, there's, there's so many awesome takeaways from this conversation. I think photographers can, can, can learn from, you know, uh, because we're so stuck on our businesses and, and sort of being very, very, very narrow minded with our, with, with what's, what's in front of us that we forget to grow ourselves or find a way to not only grow, but also grow, the community that we're a part of. So 
Um, I'm uh, I'm honored to 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 know you, man. This oh, is, come on. <laughs> this is no, this is this is phenomenal. I mean, uh, you know, literally, this is something that I've been sort of mulling about in my own head in terms of what I should do, and uh, you've inspired me. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate coming on here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care.